One of the most contested debates throughout the pandemic has been whether lockdowns have been worse for our health than COVID itself. Data from the Australian Bureau of Statistics have shed some light on this. Comparing the first five months of this year with last year and with the average in the four years before COVID, if you just go by the crude number of deaths, it doesn't look good. There were more than 58,000 deaths recorded between January and May. That's about 3,500 more deaths than the average. But what counts is actually the rate of deaths according to your age. And that's been going down. Because we've got an ageing population, we do see an increase in the number of deaths over time. But once we account for the differences in our population, once we account for that population ageing, what we can see is that death rates are tracking down in a lot of cases. It's important to get this right, to disentangle the effects of the pandemic from what would have happened anyway. Superficially, on the crude numbers of deaths, dementia is up by 17% compared to the average, diabetes is up 9, cancer 6 and chronic lung disease is 3.5. But when you age adjust, you get a different and more optimistic picture. Death rates are continuing to track down for uh, conditions such as cancer and cardiovascular disease. They're holding relatively steady for dementia and diabetes. And we're seeing a really big drop um, in respiratory illness. During COVID, acute pneumonia and influenza deaths dropped by over 20% but it's been even more dramatic with influenza. Not a single Australian was reported as dying from the flu from July 2020 to May of this year. And the measures that we use to prevent COVID are those that you use to prevent a respiratory disease in general. Dementia is now the commonest cause of death in women and the second commonest in men. When you adjust for the fact that we're aging, the rates of dementia deaths may actually be starting to fall based on 2020 data. And if that's true, it's because what's good for the heart is good for the brain. The rate of heart disease, i.e. heart attacks, and cerebrovascular disease, i.e. strokes, continues to fall as it has for many years. Those declining rates are a tribute to people giving up smoking, taking their blood pressure tablets, getting their heart risk checked. But the news is not all good. Death rates in Aboriginal communities are not falling, so the gap is widening. In addition, there are warning signs about cancer in the general community. The statistics show that there's been no age-adjusted rise in cancer deaths over the last year. But that doesn't mean there aren't problems to come. Last year, it was noted that fewer cancer diagnostic tests were being done. The Victorian data showed a very clear signal that there were just over 2,500 cancers that had not been diagnosed that you would expect to have seen. Cancer Australia data confirmed that fall in diagnostic tests nationally for a group of 14 cancers and also show a 9% reduction in treatment procedures in 2020. There was some modelling work done uh, by a group at Melbourne University which predicted um, from the 2020 lockdowns um, at least an extra 350 cancer deaths and a very large impact on the cost of treatment, so an extra $46 million uh, because of the extra costs of treating uh, later stage cancers. And that's just Victoria. Because of treatment, it will take a few years for these preventable deaths to show in the statistics. The reasons for delayed cancer diagnosis are complex, says Professor Emery. But he believes that the trend to telehealth consultations over the phone is partly to blame. It's much harder, of course, to assess uh, somebody um, if you can't see them physically or examine them. Subtle signs of cancer uh, weren't actually coming in and being physically examined. There's no question that lockdowns have caused enormous distress, especially for young people. But apart from a rise in alcohol-related deaths last year, there do seem to be reductions in suicides and deaths from other drug use. This conflicts with some of the dire predictions. What we suggested also, though, if government took radical action in terms of income support, and personal support, it had an attempt to ameliorate those effects. 
And that appears to be what has happened. In subsequent modelling, we showed the effect of job keeper, job seeker, and income support. And very importantly, that appears to have had a very positive effect on suicide rates, particularly for men, particularly in working age groups in 2020. According to Professor Ian Hickey, we could be storing up problems which we'll only see in the years to come. What we have seen is the major impacts on young people and the very really dramatic rises in emergency room presentations with self-harm and suicide attempts in young people. So there are still very significant warning signs for the future. But of course, psychological distress can show itself in various ways, especially with drug and alcohol use. So while drug dependence deaths went down, alcohol-related deaths actually went up. People may be not surprised about that with the degrees of home drinking and home purchasing of alcohol. So there are mixed results in terms of other mental health-related causes. If you put this in an international context, where European nations, for example, are reporting COVID-related reversals in life expectancy, we've actually done not too badly so far. If you look at what's happened over the last couple of years in the rest of the world, they would be really envious. They would be wanting figures like this. That is fantastic news for the Australian population, and it's a tribute to all the efforts that the community have gone to. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.